Okay. So this is how to win at technical interviews, the secret protocol you're expected to follow. So the first question you're asking is, why listen to me? Why should you care what I have to say? So I've passed technical interviews at a lot of large technical companies and major financial companies. Uh, so I, you know, I have some experience with this. There's a three-step plan for how you do this. The first step is you repeat the question. Uh, this is also your opportunity to make sure that you've heard it properly and to clarify any assumptions. A lot of questions are intentionally ambiguous. This is where you can ask things like, can I assume the values fit in an int? What happens if the array is empty? Uh, it lets you uh, test corner cases. And it's very important that you do this step first. Because if you start writing anything down before you do this step, some interviewers will get grumpy because you didn't follow the process that they want you to follow. So by doing this first, that allows you to cut that off. It gives you one last opportunity to fail. Second question is write the interface. The answer to almost every interview question is going to be a single function that accepts some amount of parameters and returns a value. And then the step three is use a hash map. <laughs> now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, David, this can't always work. And you're right. Only about 85 to 90% of the time does this solve your interview problems. Uh, for about 85 to 90% of the remainder of the time, for experts only, use algorithm. Uh, so basically, uh, when you're preparing for an interview, go to CPP reference, look at the algorithms library thing, and just you know, study one of those, get familiar with them. So let's go through some examples. I picked this one completely at random. I went on leak code. I said, give me a random problem. This is a leak code medium. The problem is, given an integer array of size n, find all elements that appear more than n over 3 rounded down times. Now, an interesting thing about this that you might notice is that there can be at most two numbers in the array that have this property, because you can't have three things that are more than a third of all possible values. So this is the interface that I ended up writing. Uh, it accepts a span and returns a static vector. You can accept a reference to a const vector and return a vector. That's fine, too. This interface will give you minor bonus points if you can explain why you did it. But just saying vector is good enough to get you through most interviews. Now, rather than trying to think about the problem like, oh, how am I going to solve this? What's the whole universe of solutions that I can use to solve this problem right here? Instead, I start with, how can I use a hash map to solve this problem? The hash map is going to be a map of values, because it's always a map of values to something. What's the something? It's asking about a count of things, so it's going to be a map of values to count. So here's my answer. We create a hash map. We increment the value for each value that we, each time we find the value. That's the first three lines. And then we construct our result, and we iterate through the map. And for each count that we find that is larger than the size divided by three, we add it to the result and we return it. This took me about four minutes to write. A leak code medium is supposed to take you about 20 minutes or so in an actual problem. But because I knew where to start for the solution, I could just jump right into doing this, and it was easy. Let's take another leak code problem at random. Given three integer arrays, nums one, two, and three, return a distinct array containing all the values that are present in at least two out of the three arrays. You may return the values in any order. That last sentence is actually a hint telling you, hey, use a hash map. It's called unordered map. <laughs> so we write the interface. We accept a span of three integers. Uh, three integer arrays, rather, and we return a vector. Pretty simple. Here's my answer. The, the main problem, the main thing we have to decide whenever we use a hash map is what is the, uh, the mapped type going to be? In this case, the question we're trying to answer is, is it in these arrays? So we have a struct with three bools in it. We iterate through the first array, uh, and if we find it, we set the bool to true. We iterate through the second array, we set that bool to true, and so on for the third array. And then at the end, we iterate over the whole map. And if at least two of the three uh, are set to true, so we add them up and say greater than or equal to two, we add it to the result and we return it. Now, the nice thing about using a hash map is that in these technical interviews, your interviewer will also ask you, what is the time and space complexity of your solution? And the answer is easy. It's big O n time, big O n space. Basically, no matter what your solution is, that's going to be the answer with a hash map. Because you have to iterate over everything in the input once to stick it into the map. Accessing the map is constant time, so you can do that a whole bunch of times and you're fine and it's going to take you big O n space. Now, sometimes you have slightly more complicated things. Like, for, for instance, for the previous problem, there actually is an algorithm that solves it in, const, in linear time and constant space. But you have to know about the boyer more majority vote algorithm. Your interviewer probably doesn't expect you to know that. But if you do, it, it's kind of like a trivia thing. Like, oh, yeah, hey, I know it, so I got bonus points. But if you stick with the use a hash map solution, you'll get a good solution that is probably good enough to get you to pass the interview. Let's look at another question. A permutation of an array of integers is an arrangement of its members into a sequence of linear order. Gives more stuff, and then, given an array of integers, nums, find the next permutation of nums. This is a leak code hard. So we write the interface. We accept a span of ints. We return nothing because it's going to modify them in place. OK, great. 
use a hash map, right? No. Leak code hard. We can't do that. So we have to fall back on our expert only solution, which is use std algorithm. There's the answer right there. So, how to know when not to use a hash map? If the input is sorted, that's a clue that you use the set based algorithms. If you need to output in a particular order, that's a clue that you're going to need to sort it. And if we can solve all of the problems this easily, maybe that's a sign that our technical interviews aren't actually testing all of the skills that we need. Thank you. Yeah.